Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Ruang Tian uh, from the University of Washington, Seattle. I'm one of the co-organizers of the BCBS conference. Today I'm here with one of our invited speakers. Hello, I'm Tim McKenzie from the University of Colorado. Tim, I'm very excited about your recent discoveries on histodiacetylase and diastolic dysfunction of the heart. Would you mind giving us a summary of your findings? Sure, yeah, we've been studying histone deacetylases or HDACs for many years. These are enzymes that regulate epigenetics and transcription in the nucleus. But recently we've found that HDACs serve an important role in regulating relaxation of the heart in the context of diastolic dysfunction and heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And we found that uh, pharmacological agents that block HDAC catalytic activity have a profound ability to improve diastolic function in rodent models as well as more translationally relevant models of HEF-PEF. That's really exciting. Um, as you know, that uh, the ability of the heart to relax is just as important as the heart ability to contract. Um, there's a large population of patients who are suffering from diastolic dysfunction. So I wonder what your thoughts are uh, on the translational potential of your findings. Sure, we're extremely excited about these findings. As you know, there are no FDA-approved drugs to treat HEFPEF. It's a huge unmet medical need. We believe that our findings, albeit early, suggest the potential for using HDAC inhibitors to treat this patient population. So uh, you're the experts of the ex HDAC inhibi uh, inhibitors and, its bio um, and the biological role of uh, HDACs. Uh, traditionally, we think HDACs and deacetylate histones. Now you have new discovery mm -hmm. for its non-genomic deacetylase activity. So uh, what do you think of its relationship of non-genomic and genomic deacetylase? Functions. Obviously, the situation is very complex. Most people think of histones as being acetylated, and certainly they are. Um, but essentially, every protein in the cell is acetylated on lysine residues and can be deacetylated by HDACs. We have found that deacetylation of sarcomeric proteins by HDACs plays a central role in the control of relaxation. But we also know that genomic roles for HDACs and controlling epigenetic processes are important for diastolic dysfunction too, probably via um, stimulation of cardiac fibrosis. So does this mean it will lead to a new direction of research? Well, this is certainly a new direction for us. Historically, my lab has studied gene regulation and now we're studying uh, myofibril mechanics. It's a new area for us, but we're extremely excited by these findings. This is really a novel mechanism for diastolic dysfunction. It hasn't been um, established previously and we think there's tremendous therapeutic potential. There are four FDA-approved HDAC inhibitors, um, mostly to treat cancer, uh, but there are dozens of ongoing clinical trials for HDAC inhibitors and in non-oncologic indications as well. It's surprising to people that you can inhibit HDACs without killing someone, right? These are central regulators of gene transcription in every cell in the body. Um, but surprisingly, humans can tolerate HDAC inhibitors. And so we think there is great translational potential here. That's really intriguing. And thank you so much, Tim. I look forward to your talk. Thank you.